everybody we are back for another edition of heart to heart <laughs> i've kind of been away for a while because with um these holiday season i took a break from inviting guests but today we have a fabulous fabulous wonderful guest joan is going to joan uwasu is going to come on and speak to us about finding love after divorce we we are talking we are talking second chances, y'all. <laughs> I'm Dr. E. For those of you who do not know me, I'm actually a self-care coach for people who have undergone a breakup, who've gone through that breakup could have been a divorce. The breakup could have been a long-term relationship, what have you. Thank you all for joining. What do I want to say about this topic before our guest comes on? You should always give yourself a second chance at love because we definitely have to give our, our heart a chance to heal. That's one thing I learned many, many years ago after my major breakup. I didn't know that I could love again. Like I knew I wanted to love again just because I'm a loving person. I love being connected to people. I wanted to be in another relationship but my heart felt so broken after that four year relationship where we lived together. Then we had to split everything up. Um, oh, okay. So this is right on time. So you're definitely going to learn. But um, I had to learn to love myself again. Let me tell you, it was hard, 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 but my commitment was to myself. My commitment was to becoming a better version of Elmira. My commitment was to continuing to pursue the things that I enjoyed as well. Because sometimes after divorce, after breakup, we can lose hope, we can lose faith and say, nobody loves me. The world is crashing down on me. Believe me, I felt that. I was curled up in the back of the seat of my car thinking I was going to die because the menstrual cramps from the emotional pain was literally almost killing me, y'all. Like that is, that is what was going on. But I got up. I, I started to focus on me more. I started as the days went on. I started to distance myself from him. I started to say, okay, what is it I really desire? What is going to be my second chance? That was what I, and then about a year and a half after that, I moved. I made a move. I said, it's time for me to move to a new city. I need to restore my heart. I need to put some more time into me and not just be focused on building relationship at this time. What I need to focus on is building a relationship with myself. And that's exactly what I did. I built, I started to build a relationship with myself in a new city. And it, that was like the best, decision ever like let me tell you I was like this is where I need to be <laughs> I was like I need to it, and it was scary I'm not telling you that any of this was like overly easy because when I um when I moved hey Joan hey I can't see you but I know you're there I think the audience can see you and hear you because I can hear you fine oh okay that's strange and weird because I can see you well part that's all that matters but you know what we're talking about and I was giving people before you arrived because you are here for the second chances party I'm here for that party <laughs> yes <laughs> I was just talking about how we have to because this is your wheelhouse and this is exactly what we're going to talk about today second chances love after divorce okay so i know you work with a lot of clients you have a podcast you've written a book you you had your own personal experience what do you feel is one of the top challenges people face and women because i know you help women after 40 what do they face after the divorce? Mm -hmm. So 
So yes, and thanks for everyone for joining. I see Nikki Dizzo in the house. Um, so for me, and a lot of women, especially successful women, the women I work with, they're crushing it in their careers, they're crushing it in their business, and they think those skills, everything that they're doing in that world should directly translate to having a good, great relationship. And it just really doesn't work that way. So I've found that the greatest challenge is women, and I'm speaking to women now, not really understanding what it takes, the steps that you need to take after a breakup or a divorce before you can attract and keep your second chance, love, or soulmate, or whatever you want to call it. So jumping from one relationship to the, to the other just doesn't work because you're going to attract the same kind of person. You're going to behave in exactly the same way and you're going to get exactly the same results. So I know that you work with people who just go, are going through a breakup and that's the first step. You need to heal. You need to give yourself time to heal from that relationship. And for some people maybe who were in a very, very long relationship or marriage or you have kids, that was your identity, right? That marriage, that relationship was your identity. So who are you outside of that? So you're no longer that person. Who are you? A lot of people have lost themselves in their relationships. So they don't even know who they are, let alone what they want or what kind of partner that they're looking for before they jump back into the dating world. And obviously there's other things around knowing how to date. Like I didn't know how to date. I just thought it was something that was common sense. It was natural, boy meets girl, boy likes girl, we're married and happily ever after. Isn't that what we read in the books and in the movies? But it really doesn't work that way, especially when you're over 40. There's more at risk. There's more, there's just so much baggage everyone is carrying. So how do you show up as the best person to give you the highest opportunity or chance to first be able to attract the right kind of person, but also to know how do you identify the red flags? How do you know that this person is, is what I'm looking for? What are your values? What are their values? How do you know how to date? So for me, those are the three things. You gotta heal first from a relationship. We all go through heartbreak, so heal from that and then take the necessary steps to be able to find, attract, and keep your second chance love. Hmm. So the healing is a big part. And one one thing you mentioned, Joan, was after 40, there's so much at risk. And I hear a lot of people talk about that, particularly like divorce. You were joined in a union with a partner. Y'all shared a home, children, secrets, <laughs> finances, <laughs> all of it. You know what I'm saying? Insurances. How do you like start to knowing that you had all of these things together? And I'm using my hands in this way because that's what it was. You were together in this partnership for years, join, how do you, even though you said the healing, how do you start to separate that to even get to a place where you want to heal? Hmm. So, so for, for a lot of people, they don't even realize that their lack of healing is holding them back. So you're stuck in this angry, bitter, it's this person victim mindset mode. And you know, you can feel it because you're angry all the time. You're still upset. Every, every second conversation is around the relationship and how they cheated you. Maybe not cheated on you, but just cheated you. They robbed you of a, of a beautiful life that you could have had. So you're just constantly in that space. And it's not helping you. And if you have kids, it's not helping your kids either, right? So get it to the point where you decide, I deserve better. I can have better. I'm worthy of having better. This is not it for me. My story is not over. The book is not done. I want to rewrite a new story for my life. I want things to be different. I believe in second chances. If you don't, if you, if you're still in the mindset of oh, love is all a sham, oh please, they're no good men, it's all done and dusted, uh, don't, don't, don't you dare go. Then maybe you haven't even started on the journey of healing. But when you start to choose yourself and believe that I'm worthy, like I can have this, and you surround yourself with people who have that, and not just people who are in the same boat as you, where all we do is just talk about our relationships gone wrong. You start to have that desire within you too. This is possible. I can have a second chance love. I deserve better, right? I'm not a bad person. Like no one, maybe there are people who believe they're bad people, but I think um, inherently we all know that we're good people. I'm a good person and I would find somebody who would love me and accept me for who I am because that's what we really want. We just want to be accepted for who we are and have a beautiful life and share a life with somebody else. So when you start to pick yourself, choose yourself, work on yourself for you, 
forget the really get into another relationship but you start to heal for yourself because you're not healing is holding you back and i'm not talking just about relationships it's holding holding you back financially it's making you miserable in your business in your friendships like being in that state affects other areas of your life so it's so important to want to move forward from this quickly i know that when i was still dealing with the shame of my divorce like it was affecting my health i wasn't i was never yeah. thinking about it but it was affecting my health so at some point i had to say to myself is this what i want where you know financially i was a wreck you know i hated my job now i was miserable at work my business was failing my health was failing. like really do i need all of this or am i ready to work on myself and choose me so i started to work on myself i started to heal from whatever and take responsibility and accountability for the role that i played in my relationship as well it was no longer about the victim game the blame game it's like okay i want different what do i need to do to be different who do i need to become to get different out of life and then it takes you on a healing journey and there's no timeline so people say oh no 24 hours i'm good i'm down i moved on no you haven't <laughs> right like you haven't. <laughs> like you haven't right so it's a journey it's a journey of forgiving yourself of forgiving the other person of self-worth of self-love or of choosing you of knowing where to go to for help some people are able to do it on their own, but many people can't. So it might mean you get in a therapist or get in a coach or get, you hire mm -hmm. someone like Amara to walk with you, to walk through the pain so that you can come out on the other side. But you really cannot move forward without healing. Healing is the first step and probably the most important step. Yeah, that is so huge. And I love what you said about you recognize your health was suffering <laughs> and you're like i'm not over this because i'm noticing my health is a shambles this is occurring what might be some other signs people are not over it because they told themselves oh my divorce was you know six months ago so it's time to move on or it was this time limit but in reality they're dealing with some some signs some signals some symptoms what are some of those symptoms? Mm -hmm. I think the, the, the biggest telltale sign is how you talk about your past relationship. Hmm. Like if you, if you still can't sit and have an, a, an objective conversation around, about, about your ex, if you're still angry, if you're still pointing fingers and blaming him or her or whatever for what went wrong, you, you're not healed. You should have forgiven them, forgiven yourself, and wish them well. It doesn't mean become BFFs with them, but you have to be at a point where it's like, okay, that happened, all of that nastiness went down, but I forgive you and I release you because I know I'm destined for better. You're not going to hold me back. So it's okay. So I can talk about my ex today. I can see my ex outside. I'm like, hey, how are you doing? This is no hard feelings. I really feel nothing, right? And I wish him well. So when you know that you deep down inside of you, you know when you hear that person and you're like, why can't he just die already? You, you haven't right. healed. <laughs> right? <laughs> you haven't healed. So you, you can sit there and lie to yourself and say to other people, no, I'm over it, I'm done, I don't care. But what happens when you hear the person's name? Right? Mm. When your kids talk about, oh, daddy just bought me this new thing. You just blow your eyes and be like, you know, he, he never did it yeah. that when we were married. Right? So you, maybe you haven't really healed and maybe there's still work that you need to do on yourself because there must be something about you that led you into that relationship you know, to start out with, right? So for me, I think that's the biggest tell to side. Just sit with yourself, be honest with yourself. Self-awareness is the most important thing in anything we do in life. Ask yourself the true question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is so true because you you making me think of a circumstance like with one of my exes. His mom and I still are pretty friendly and she called me, I don't know when this was, probably like two and a half years ago or something now. She's like, you know your friend got married talking about my ex. I was like, oh my goodness, congratulations. Like, I wasn't any way about it like oh my gosh she got married i missed my chance but it was i was just happy for him and for his mother to reach out and let me know i was appreciative um as well because it showed i had done the healing work because let me tell you i had to go through 
some layers of forgiveness, um, forgiving myself, forgiving him, just everything, everything. And you have to, we got to be in that space of healing, as you mentioned. Yeah. And it's a journey, right? Don't give yourself a timeline. Like even sometimes you might think you've healed and then a couple of months later, something happens, you trigger, you're like, but then you catch yourself. You're like, ooh. Mm -hmm. That still hurts a little bit. Okay, let's work on that. Why is that? Right? And just walk through it. Like I said, some people can do this on their own, but if you find that you're struggling, then get help. And help is not your best friend. Like, you, if that person is not qualified to help you because they might just keep you stuck. And that's the, oh, don't worry, let's just Google and let's, 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 let's monitor him online and send him. Like, friends are great. They support you. I appreciate that. But when you're trying to do this type of healing journey, it's better to find either people who've gone through it and come out on the other side or find professional help. So you right. do it the right way, right? Yeah, that is so important. What have you seen which has been unique about the women after divorce versus like a woman who just went through like a regular breakup? What is what is unique about a uh, divorce? Mm -hmm. I, I think the biggest part, um, the, di the biggest difference is that, and it could be just in your head or it could be real, is the stigma. If you mm. say, oh, I broke up with this person, people are like, oh, okay, well, he's lost. But the moment you mention the divorce word, it's like, ooh, now you're going to piss off God, you're pissed off the church, you're pissed off your family, you're pissed off this, you're pissed off it. Like now is where the judgment really comes into play. Because now people start questioning, are you sure you're really, really done? Are you sure? What exactly did he do? That's not enough for you to be divorced. People, the stigma, the shame that comes with divorce is a lot heavier than a, a breakup, a relationship, a breakup, right? And, and some of it might just be in our minds. But I know I went through a lot. Like people came at me, like to my face. <laughs> they didn't even hide it. They really? were talking behind my back. But oh, people came, people came to me and said, Joe, we can't be friends anymore because you're divorced. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And today, that particular friend who told me that, she's divorced now. But again, for me, I wasn't wishing her ill. I said, that's where you are. That's your level of consciousness. And that's okay. Right? But so for, for divorced people, there's just a lot more. There's a lot, of, there's a lot more shame to do it. And if you have kids, then it's, it's even worse. Mm -hmm. right? so, 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 yes. So I think that people who are divorced go through a, a longer healing period than people who have been in a relationship. But people who were in a long relationship, if you've been in a relationship for 10 years, you're, you're as good as being married, right? It's pretty much the same. Maybe you don't have a piece of paper, you didn't change your name, but it's still the same. Your lives are so integrated. Your families are so integrated. There's just so much finances, you know, everything. Your lives have become one. So it's just as heavy as a divorce, but that divorce, oh my God, at least for me, my experience, it, it was a huge blow and people were not, people were not kind. That's something I didn't realize. I, I mean, I've heard it on the surface, but hearing you talk about it where you were actually shunned by people saying, we can't talk to you because you divorced, like it's a scarlet letter. I'm like, <laughs> and, and that's how people treat it. And you know, what it made me think of is some people avoiding divorce so they don't have to face that shame. Meanwhile, they're knowing their relationship, their marriage is not actually working. Yep, absolutely. I, I see people reach out to me a lot on, on Facebook. I will say to people, mm -hmm. I wish I had the courage to leave, but I can't. Really? Because I can't because of all those expectations, because of society, because of my family. I just can't do it. But marriage is dead. We're not talking. We don't even live in the same city. We don't, we don't talk. The only conversations are around the kids. But I just don't have the courage to leave. Because to them, the, 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 back, the backlash from leaving is way more than their misery for the rest of their lives. What, what do you feel builds courage to leave the marriage? Worthiness. So you have to choose yourself. 
you have to believe that you're worthy of better. I deserve better. This could not be. And if you're, if you believe in God or whatever, you should believe that this could not be the best for me. Like I deserve mm -hmm. more. There's definitely tomorrow will always be better than my past. That's one of my own mentors. So if today is really bad, I'm like, okay, I need to move forward with tomorrow. Whatever tomorrow presents, I'm going, I'm going to take that chance because I believe that I'm worthy of something better. I may not know what's coming tomorrow, but I know I don't like what's happening today. And I know today's not getting any better. It's affected my health, my mental health issues. It's affecting my social life, my financial life. Like, would I really want to give up my entire existence to stay in a marriage? I choose me. So I think that's where it starts, right? Believing that you're made for more. You're bigger than a marriage. Like marriage is a beautiful thing, if you get it right. It's a beautiful thing. It mm -hmm. can tell you in ways that it will take you way, way longer as a single person, right? You get into do life with somebody, you're sharing all the pain, all the joys, all the... Marriage is beautiful, but marriage can also hinder you very quickly. Like it can take you from this amazing person to a shadow of, of yourself, or even into something that you don't even recognize. Hmm. You, how did you get to be so matter of fact? Like you, you're just so, you're just so certain, so sure. And I know that came from your healing work and, and what you've done and just who you are innately. But yes, how did you become so matter of fact? I'll tell you something. So, so for as long as I can remember, people, people, people who know me as an adult will always say, Joan, you're so courageous. You're so you know, like what you're saying, you're just so sure of yourself. You, but I also, I always wasn't like that. I wasn't born that way. Like I'm the mm -hmm. youngest of all the kids in my, in my family. And honestly, my, my siblings were, will argue, but I thought I got the worst parenting. Like I thought that my parents were already done by the time they had me. And so it was like, okay, you just take care of yourself and just be on your own. <laughs> and when oh, I was wow. speaking, they were like, why are you speaking? Why must your voice be heard? Like, just shut up already. Don't speak. Your older sisters and brothers are speaking. So I felt that I was always shut up as a kid. And I always had to fight my way to be heard. I always had to fight for people to listen to me. So I could never just be subtle when people listen. I had to be this aggressive person, like, no, I must be heard. Because I'm the youngest doesn't mean that I don't have a voice or I don't have a mind or I'm not intelligent or there, there isn't stuff I can bring to the table. So I became that fighter, that, that child that most people didn't want because I was, I was just a fighter. And that's how it started to build me. And that's how I just went through life where I just always felt that I, I always got the short end of the stick and I just have to, I have to fight my way through. So as a kid, it was seen as, you're so rude, you don't listen to you know, your elders, you're, you're this, you're stubborn. But that's what was building my character to the point where I'm like, I'm, I need to fight for myself. I need to speak my own truth. By my yeah. truth doesn't have to be your truth, but I, I'm entitled to speaking my truth. I'm entitled to speaking my own mind. I'm entitled to asking questions. Don't just tell me stuff, tell me why. Like if you're telling me, um, I think, or I, no, 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 tell me. Have you done the work? Have you done the research? Have you experienced it? Tell, give me something that I can hold on to. So that's how I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, as a child, I was, I was, I was even shy. I was, I was shy as a child, not because I was naturally shy, but it was this thing, shut up, you're the youngest, you're this, you're that. So <laughs> they just want to keep shy. you quiet. <laughs> keep quiet. I became very unsure of myself. I would second guess myself. Why can't you be more like your sister? Why? Uh, but I was like, okay, no, 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 no. I may be tiny, but... I will have a voice. Yeah, well, you definitely, you definitely got the voice now. <laughs> it was like, y'all going to listen to me. Because one of the beautiful things you do, Joan, is help other people find their voice, too. Mm -hmm. um, because with your podcast, even just you speaking, let's say you didn't even have a podcast or any of that. Just your presence allows people, just like the example you gave earlier about always being complimented on your courageousness, people, and they, they're still reaching out to you in your inbox saying, I wish I had the courage, I wish I had, people are inspired by that, and it is definitely a beautiful thing, <laughs> because <laughs> it's, 
what I've seen, especially in this space, have, you know, allowing people to see second chances and possibilities, they need to live through you first. They need to be inspired by your story. You help them believe even more. Because what do you have to say to the people who are all like, dating is not for me. I've been divorced. I don't want to date again. They've done the healing. They know in their heart they want to find love again but something is still holding them back because they are either discouraged by the dating scene, they don't want to do online dating, whatever it is, it's something holding them back. What do you say to that segment of women? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to tackle it from two uh, parts. So the first one is around, let's let's do the dating apps and then I'll talk about opening up your options. So with the dating apps, like when I found myself single seven years ago or so, and what I was used to prior to getting divorced, like even the person I did marry was through an introduction, right? So that was what I was familiar with, where people would introduce people and that's how you met. That's how I grew up. Or I go to a party and somebody sees me and say, hey, pretty girl, what's your name? Quick. That's how I met, at least when I was younger. Um, that's how the world operated when I was younger. But seven years ago, at being divorced, like no one was making introductions. Like most people I knew were married. They didn't have single friends. So introductions were just not happening. Maybe it happened once in a while, but it wasn't leading to any greater chance of success, right? So mm-hmm. I decided to try online dating. And just as with, we think it's a, social media, Facebook. Oh, I just sit there and I just swipe, I just put whatever pictures, AI filtered pictures, doesn't matter. I just lie about things, it doesn't matter. And it's all a game. Well, when you treat it that way, the results always show because you're not using it correctly. So you're going to get the wrong type of results. And I suffered that because I was matching with God knows how many different crazy people who either did not really want to meet up in person, they just wanted to be pen pals, or they were not looking for a relationship. They They were just looking for hookups right or they will lie about certain things about them and when i'll meet them i'll be like i'm trying to check the app that's not what i saw in the apps right or even when they did match all of that and we had a date we would go on one date and i'll be ghosted and i thought okay mm-hmm. gotta be there they're the problem it's not me i'm good i'm great and i did that for a while right but at some point i had to say okay no 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 come on what are the stats saying the stats are saying that most people are meeting and marrying people online why do I have to be part of those who are not succeeding? So I said, okay, there's got to be a way to use this online dating to my advantage, right? And quickly figured out that it's not common sense. It is not just about you having a picture there and thinking that, oh, that, that's it. That's enough. Swipe left, swipe right. And magically, a relationship should, should be born. So there's things, there's ways to show up online. There's ways, there's different kind of put the right pictures, have the right bio that would attract the right kind of people, go in with the right kind of energy, know how to go from quickly from online chatting to having a face-to-face uh, conversation. If you've said everything on the app, why is the person going to want to meet you? There's no mystery around you. It's like, oh, okay, no, already. She's yeah. like, okay. Every time I say, what are you doing? You're like, nothing, I'm just chilling. Well, he's not going to be interested in <laughs> meeting face-to-face. Let's just be honest, right? So there's a way to show up and you might say, oh, it's being yeah. inauthentic. Yeah, but it's, it's not. It's like how we do everything in life. You learn, you master the skills to be able to opti- optimize your experiences and get the best possible results. So there's a way to show up online. There's a way to be online. There's a way to have conversations online. There's a way to transition into face-to-face meeting. There's a way to go out on a first date. There's a way to dress and look and smile and talk and lean back. There's just many things to, that you need to know how to do so that that can move you forward to having a relationship. So if you find that you're matching the wrong people online, no, great people are online, lots, like thousands, millions of great people are online. If you're not able to move from online chatting to -to face-to-face meetings, there's something you're not doing correctly. If you're having one meetings and being ghosted, there's something you're not doing correctly as well. So I would encourage everyone, online is like the mighty ocean. Introduction is like, like a cup, like there's only so many people that can fit in a cup, right? You have the massive wide ocean where now there's more options. You can, you can browse as much as you want to browse. You can select the ones that you feel 
are aligned with your values, not just the physical appearance. Because over 40, like physical appearance, yes, it's still high up there, but there's way more to life than just how you look physically, right? So what are your values? What are you looking for? How do you sniff out the, the good people or the, the people who are just there to play? What are the green flags? What are the mm -hmm. red flags? Like dating is a whole, it's like, it's, it's like PhD. You have to learn this stuff. I wish I could say it's common sense. It is not. So there's a way to be online. And my recommended way to meet people is online. Offline still happens, but not as often. And introductions, as much as I love, I would love for anybody to introduce me to anybody. Nobody was introducing me to nobody. And again, remember you're divorced. So with that, all that stigma as well going, why was she divorced? The first question, but yeah, online, yeah, yeah. I'm divorced. Like we already know we're divorced. Why, we talk, why are you asking me? Uh, what did you do? Why did he divorce you? Like you assume he divorced me. Okay, fine. So that's the first part. Online dating is your go-to. It's where you can practice while you're trying to learn how to be a master at dating. It's where you can. There's no. There's no. There's no expectations when you start off. You can go on as many dates as you improve and you get better at dating. The second piece I want to tackle is type. Like people, people like to say, oh, I have a type and then you're stuck in that. And usually your type is all the people that you dated in the past that have led to the results that you have today, uh, zilch, like horrible, toxic experiences. So being open, and that's what I say to people, like when you're coming up with, this is what I'm looking for. What are some of the things that we can expand on? Like, and I'm just going to say now, I was one of those people seven years ago, if you had told me Joan would date a non-black person, like even my friends will laugh at you. <laughs> Joan, no, yeah, no, no. Joan is all black. Like, what are you talking about? Like, impossible. I was not open to it at all. And the person who got me to open to be open to it was actually my mother. Surprise! Mm. Right? We were having a conversation after my worst relationship ever, and she said to me, "Are you not tired of just dating the same kind of people? Why don't you mm. explore?" Maybe, like, my sister is married to a, a, a white guy, and my brother's married to a white lady. And she just said, they're, they're having better success than you. So maybe expand this pool a little bit and try dating someone who's not black. Oh my God. I was like, because I didn't know it. And what you don't know most times, you just say, oh, that's not good for me. It's not for me. Okay, okay. We have nothing in common. We have nothing. But I tried it. And I was surprised because now the focus wasn't so much on the color of the skin or how they looked. It was on what mm -hmm. are the things, what are my values? What are the things that I really enjoy doing? How does it align with this person? And that was really where the shift started to happen in terms of me choosing the right partner. Because you can keep meeting people and think, oh, I'm physically attracted, but for how long, right? If the values, if the things that, that you need to have the long-term relationships are not there, the relationship is still going to crash and burn. Right, yeah. so my focus had to shift away from just the physicality of the color of their skin or how they look, that they were six foot three. Like I had all those things that I thought were so important to me, but I had that in my previous relationships and it was all a big fancy at the end of the day. So I started to shift beyond what the, my typical type was and started to explore a bit wider, a bit broader and allowed myself to experience. Going on a date is not, a, you, you haven't signed any piece of paper. Go and yeah, ask you a different kind of person and see how you feel. And if you don't like you, then go for a good evening and the time and be on your merry way. Right? But is this resistance to no no no? I just know I can never like have you tried it? Like have you tried it? I just know. How, like, how do you know? You don't know. So be open. As you as you get back into the dating scene, divorced or you're older, you're over 40, let the focus be more on values. Right? Who's this person? What are their goals in life? Where are they going? You can't just be you look good and you dress well. Right? So yeah, so those are my two points. Online dating, you gotta try it and you gotta learn how to use it and then be open to going outside of your typical type. Yeah, what I wanna say about the the last thing you mentioned about being open, expanding beyond your type is just what we're talking about second chances why would you want to make your second chance just like the first chance like that doesn't make sense to me and a lot of times that's what we do we repeat the same relationship over and over or the, the same patterns mm -hmm. but by expanding by opening up by saying i'm going to do things differently this time 
I'm to, going to explore another option. To me, that gives you a viable second chance as opposed to shutting yourself off, closing your heart, saying, oh, I'm not going to do that. You're just back in the same cycle. Do you find that one of the things that ruins love for people is being stuck in a loop, like stuck in a cycle? Have you seen that? No, absolutely. People keep choosing exactly the same type of people. It's the same. Just repeat, repeat, repeat. And life will keep mm -hmm. giving you the same lessons until you choose to learn. So if you don't learn, it's some constant repeat. So until you decide to break the pattern and do something different, Everything you knew is what got you to where you are. So now you have to challenge yourself to do something different. Change only happens when you change. But people don't want to change. They're like, oh, it's the same. It's not me, it's them, man. Perfect. It's not, the, it's just this version. No, it's the same thing, right? So if you don't make conscious changes and say, okay, this is what I've tried in the past. Didn't work, maybe 60% worked. Let me try something different in this 40% regard and see whether I can find someone who's a better match for me. But if you keep doing exactly the same thing, chances are you're going to keep getting the same results. Right. So what it sounds like is, yes, a conscious change. And you got to start some habits. Like, Because I know one of the things you help is with the limiting beliefs. And limiting beliefs are often solidified with our habits. Like yes. when it comes to dating, we habitually date the same type or we go mm -hmm. to the same place, thinking we're going to meet somebody there, ain't nobody there. You talked about the, wasn't anybody making any introductions. You haven't got an introduction in the past 10 years, and you're thinking you're going to get one now. Try something new. <laughs> it's right. like, you know. Absolutely, and, and that's why, you know, so I have a 12-week coaching program that I work with my clients on, and we start mm -hmm. with the first part, essentially the healing. But then we also walk through rediscovery. So who are you? What are the things you're looking for? What are your values? What is your ideal partner? Like I have an exercise, the ideal partner list. And most times once yeah. you go through that list, how does it look like your previous relationships? And how did that work out? So maybe that's not your ideal list. Maybe that's a version that you think this has to be what is for me. So we make sure that we craft an ideal partner list that is not as rigid, that's just not you describing your exes. We have a list that is more aligned with your values and who you are through this rediscovery of the things that you really like, what your, what your ideal future of love looks like, right? So we go through that process of really, really crafting who your ideal partner is. And then the next step is what is the strategy to find this person, right? Because if you don't write it down, you don't do it. So don't be waiting for this introduction. Like you haven't been introduced in 10 years. It's not going to happen. So what, <laughs> right. are the, what are the real tactical strategies that you can implement? So it could be, okay, I'm going to try online dating. I'll be online 15 minutes a day. I don't recommend you spending your entire life swiping left or right. No, mindless thing, no. But you can say, okay, I'm going to spend 15 minutes a day swiping. These are the two to three apps I'm going to use. You don't need to have 50,000 apps. And you don't even need to pay for the premium services. Just use the free version. So we come up with a strategy. If you want to still meet people offline, okay, so what are some events that you can attend? What are some hobbies or um, the um, sporting events that you can pick up? Like some people meet people hiking or in a reading club or a book club. Whatever it is, we can work on a strategy for how you can also meet people offline as well. And then we start to track and monitor how you're going on these dates. What is the result of the dates? What's the outcome? What did you like about the person? What did you like about the person? What has changed? What ha needs to change? And we walk through all of that so that you not you, now it's not just I know who I am. I know what I want. You also now have the skills and the opportunities to meet many people and be able to choose the right partner at the end of the day. I'm not uh, after the first date you start planning your wedding dress. Uh, no, it was just a date. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't do, don't do that. <laughs> right? We talk about, oh, he's so perfect. No, you don't know him. Like, what do you mean? One day it's like, come on. So, and that's, that's where I work with people to really change the mindset around what dating is. Like, we're not used to, people just want to jump from I'm single to I'm married. There's many steps in between. And if you don't know, you keep making the same mistakes. You're going back to the starting point. So now I want to get you to the end point as quickly as possible. And I found that these steps, these five steps that I walk my clients through, gives them a higher chance of success, right? To be mm -hmm. able to be arrived at the end and it's with somebody who is your person, like what you really want, not just the physicality of the person, but someone who is a soul fit 
uh, for you. No 100% fit, because we're all difficult and we're like, no one's easy to get, get along with, but at least you have a lot in common that will hold you right. and build a solid foundation for you to, to have a, a long-term future with the person. You said something critical about changing the, the mindset around what dating really is. To me, dating is exploration and really getting to know yourself too, particularly after a divorce, because if you've been in union with this one partner for so many years, mm -hmm. you need to explore and give yourself that dating time before you go, like you said, people want to go from single to married. <laughs> You're trying to jump steps. Dating is all of those steps in between. It really is. And being open to the exploration being open to what comes up for you, being open to, as you mentioned before, going beyond your type, saying, you know what, I think I want to do something different because you got to, in order to really get a second chance at love, you have to activate something different. You have to, and you got to be conscious about it. Absolutely. <laughs> And that's yeah. the book. So, so in my book, in the book of Second Chances at Love, like it explains all of this process I'm talking about. If you read through the book, it's a pretty easy read, but you get to see all the different steps that you need to take that any woman who's divorced over 40, who's been struggling, can get dates or you get dates, you're being ghosted or you don't know how to show up, all of that stuff. I talk about everything and explain all the different steps in the book that can help you get from point A, single, to point B, happily married or a long-term relationship with a, a soulmate. And it's a free mm -hmm. book, so everyone can download the, the book. And they can get that right, like, on your Instagram pro profile. You have a link it, to it. it. It's, on, it's on my Instagram profile, but you can also go to my website um, for the book. Awesome. It's datingwithjoan.com, and you can just get the book. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you again, Joan. This has been a wonderful conversation. Mm -hmm. You all go to datingwithjoan.com. <laughs> This, I, I want you all to take your second chances. Don't give up on love. Don't give up on yourself. Do the healing work. And like Joan was talking about, have a strategy. Get with somebody like her. She knows what she's talking about. <laughs> she, helps, <laughs> she helps women after divorce. Follow her. Make sure you stay connected. Um, other than that, this has been another edition of Heart to Heart. Again, we talked about second chances, finding love after divorce. All right. Thank you, Joan, again. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure being here. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Joining. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.